files, each file having a particular responsibility. But some of this we modified because this code includes the user ID, but uh, when following Dominique, uh, I think we skipped the last couple of, um, the last portion of this chapter. So we have to kind of go back here and add back the, I will finish it to define the user ID. So today we'll do that. And uh, there were also some errors in your rendering of Babylon JS last time. So in the orchestrator systems, one of the systems is responsible for drawing the scene. And we should see a ball being created because in this scene, I think we're just creating a very simple scene. It's got a ball and it's also got a floor, but your floor wasn't rendering. And I think because uh, you didn't install some of the Babylon JS material packages. So I just want to uh, start off with that to go back and make sure we have the right packages. So when we, let's see, when we start the package, I'm gonna look for npm install, yes. If you could rerun this command, this should contain the packages that you want. It's got Babylon JS core, GUI materials, and I think you might be missing some of these, which would explain why the floor isn't rendering for you. And then after you do that, we can we can carry it. So Dom, let me know when you're ready and I'll hand the screen share over to you and then we can continue um, progressing in the book with you mm -hmm. as the pick for the project. Okay, cool. So yeah, I will share my screen now. Um... Okay, so you will see my screen and uh, yeah. Yeah, so if you pull up your package.json, hmm. you can see which um, dependencies you've installed. Hmm. So, I mean, go where? Yeah, hmm. so there's a file called package.json. Package.json, yes, here. Yeah. Okay, so in here, you see the part, line 11, that says dependencies? Mm, yes. You only have the Babylon JS core. Mm. So let's run that command again, and I'll paste it to you. Okay. Um, run that command. What what does that mean? You want to run this? No, I want to. Oh, oh, okay, okay. The, the local paste, one. You, I'm going to paste you a command. Oh. And put it in the chat. So oh. copy that and paste that into your terminal. Oh, and... terminal. Okay, so this is gonna do npm install the core, also the GUI, the materials and inspector. And how come it doesn't save into, oh, you ran it from the wrong directory. Um, oh. uh, okay. So you want to run npm from mm. inside your assets folder because that's where your JavaScript is. Mm. So right now you need to delete the package JSON and package lock JSON because you mm. ran npm install, but you ran it from the wrong place. Oh. So delete, delete those two files that you have there on the left. Uh, delete where package JSON, this one? Yeah, both this one and, wait a minute. Is this, this is in the assets, right? Okay. Close this. Close this too. Okay. The, these two are fine because I think you're actually inside the assets folder. Do mm. you okay? So when you ran npm install outside, did it create? Mm. Did it create a um, package.json for you? Package.json. Um, this one. Uh, can you minimize the assets folder so I can see if you have a pa if you if it created a second package.json file? Mm uh okay it didn't okay so mm -hmm. yeah go into the assets folder go into the asset yeah here so to run the command you mm -hmm. need to you have to cd into the assets folder oh da -da. that's going up i oh. need you to go into the assets folder assets so, yep oh. there you go and then run that command again just hit your up arrow, probably. Twice. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. 
There you go. Okay, so now you've got it. You see how in your dependencies you've got like more things in there now? Hmm, yeah. You're actually missing a couple other things. Uh, hmm. Let's do... Uh, this. So I'm going to... Here, I'll just paste all of these to you, I guess. Hmm. Okay. And then you just run them as you get them. This one? Yep. Okay, I pasted all the ones that you need, so. Uh, this one and the second one. Yeah, you can, yeah, just run all of those. <clears throat> okay, so now let's run your server again. So make sure you CD up, up into your root folder, not the assets folder, to run mm -hmm. your server. Mm, where? You need to run your server. Remember how to run your server? Mm, uh, get out of here, right? Control C, Control C. No, your server isn't running. So you don't oh, need to control, dock, control dock, C. Dock. Uh, yeah, you need Docker, but... But that's a separate issue. That's for the database. Oh. You need to run your server. Hmm. Do you remember um, how to do that? Okay, if you ever forget. This uh, one? Yes, but it's not going to work from there. Oh, CD, get out. Right. Get out of this folder. No, you're fine. You want to be in your root folder, which is where you are. Okay, and then go check your browser again. The local something. Yeah, local host. Okay, jump into a room and let's see if you see a floor. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. So your controls are working. You can click like forward arrow. Um, back arrow, mm -hmm. left, right, and turn. Mm -hmm. So this is our basic scene. So you have a scene ready, mm -hmm. powered by Babylon JS, and um, the next step is we want to be able to draw different users. So if you came in on another browser, mm -hmm. which um, you can go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. um, you can copy the URL and then open another tab, for example. Oh, another tab. Yeah, and you can paste it. This one? Oh, this one? Yeah. And usually I have these side by side, and I try to look for each other. But because we're not drawing each other's like head, you won't see anything right now. So, mm. But um, usually when I say go test it with like two tabs, mm. uh, one of the tabs will be incognito because oh. we're going to use, we're gonna use a, a cookie, and mm. the cookie will will contain a randomly assigned user ID. Mm. And so if you're using the same uh, browser, even mm. though you're using two different tabs, it mm. shares the same cookie. Mm. But if you use an incognito mode, you're given mm. a different cookie. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So let's progress. So, okay, so we fixed that one issue. Mm. Let's follow the book where we create a user ID. Mm. And Maybe I'll just explain briefly how we're going to do that. So mm. uh, let me take the share. Mm. Well, you, you want to take over the, the screen? Yeah, I'll okay. just take the share really quick, just so I can draw something in this board. Does it work this time? OK. So imagine we have, um, OK, we have one page that we visited. And then there's another page that we visited. 
And so the mechanism for the server to remember who you are is that the um, each visit you're going to is going to keep the cookie. So it's like the browser is sending it to the server, you could say, on each subsequent visit. So what we're going to do is that on the server side, um, we have this um, file called the router. And in here, there are these um, uh, pipes, I guess. So the, the router, uh, ex, has these sections of like, um, if you're hitting this route, then do something. So we're going to add some functions in this pipe to be called. So it like, it like calls like this function or this function, this one. We're gonna, it's like pipe, pipe this experience through all of these functions. So we're gonna add our own function to this, which it's gonna check the session. So the session is just some data that we can add to the cookie for each visit. And we're gonna say, okay, is there a user ID? Is there a user ID? And if there is, then we we just use it. We don't we don't create a new user ID. But if there's no user ID, then we're gonna add we're gonna add a random number or a string to this user ID, and then we're gonna add it into the session. And it happens that our session is stored in the cookie. So that means that as soon as you visit the the room for the first time, or the site for this the first time, you'll be given a random user ID. And you'll you'll keep that user ID for every subsequent page until you clear your cookies. And then we'll be able to use this random thing to draw a, a thing in the scene. And then if there's uh, two people connected, so let's say client client one, client A, and then client B. Um, as soon as they join, this person will get some random ID. Let's say one, two, three. This person will get four, five, six. And then the hope is that we're gonna we're gonna design something that when they join, then the server is gonna share this information. So on the front end, it, they're gonna know that oh, there's like four, five, six, and one, two, three in the room. Over here, they also know that one, two, three, and four, five, six are in the room. And they're going to draw like maybe boxes for them. But then in this browser, let's say you push the up button. Then in here, we should see we should see their cube move. So the reason why we want to have IDs is because in Babylon.js, we can say, okay, find the cube that's named uh, one, two, three, and then move it when they press their up arrow. And if you press your down arrow over here, then over here, we we'll use Babylon JS to say, okay, find the cube that's labeled four, five, six, and then move it down. So then we'll we'll be able to see each other move. So that's the reason why we want to have some unique ID is so we can label the mesh. We can name the mesh something and then we can control it with Babylon JS. And so in the book, how do we do that? Let's see. Um, we go to meeting room communications, and this is the this is the pipe. Actually, it's called pipeline, pipeline that I was talking about. So there's a pipeline and inside the pipeline are these things called plugs. So we're gonna add a new plug at the end of it called maybe assign user ID. And then here's the function for that. And then this thing, each, each plug function gets an incoming data structure called the con or connection object or whatever. And all it is is it's a it's a map or dictionary of values that uh, come from the incoming request. Things like, oh, uh, you know, what's the host? What's the path that you're trying to get to? Uh, what's, you know, the page you're trying to access? The, um, what kind of files you, you take, et cetera. So it's a very um, complicated object. The only thing we need to pull off of it is there's these helper functions that uh, Phoenix provides called get session. So you pass it that complicated object and you check to see, is there this uh, value on it? So this colon user ID is, um, it's, um, it's an atom in Elixir. This is called an atom. 
So it's saying, is there a user ID in this in this session? And then this case statement says, if nil, so there is no user session, then we're going to use this utility function that we made in a previous Skillshare to say, then user ID is this random thing. And then we're going to use this function to put the session back into the con. In Elixir, you can pipe these functions. So this pipe operator actually means that this is actually in the first, first variable. And the output of this is in turn piped as the, the output of this is another con. It's a modified con. So you take the con, pipe it in here, you get a new con, and then you pipe it in here, which is another helper function to keep sort of chaining these things together. So you take that con and you put this, this atom user ID with the value of that string, that random string. And then um, you assign this as a variable. So assigns are things that are available in our templates. Um, if, there, if you do find the user ID, so you have an existing ID in the, in the session, then you just assign it in the assigns, which is a, which is a map or dictionary that's available for the, for the front end templates if you wanted to output that variable. So in both cases, we're adding it to the assign, but we're only adding it into the session if, if it wasn't there. Uh, we don't need it to add it to the assignment if this is the case. So you're going to add this code to your router, or you can search router. You're going to add it to this, this page, and that will give you a unique user ID. So why don't you do that first? And I'll hand it to you. Okay, okay so uh, this is uh, number four, and uh, you have the router, right? Router. And you want me to put what higher? Higher. Oh wow. This part. This one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in router. Oh, in router what, router router.ex, this one. Mm -hmm. Um type this function. So this one will be um so you could somewhere put it, you could put it after um yeah put it there that's okay. fine hmm. yeah this one yeah you're fine. Mm, okay. You just don't have a formatter, which if you stop your server and do mix steps compile again, that mm. seemed to help last time. Oh, so I need to stop my server. Uh, control try C, not, Control C. Yeah, two try times. it. I'm not sure if it'll fix it, but give it a shot. Oh, and then server again. No, uh, mix space steps. D E P T S. No, dep D E P S. Dot. 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 Compile. This. Try it. Okay. Uh, no warning. It's just warning. Scroll up again. Scroll, Scroll up. up. Okay. This is okay. That's a warning. It's a warning. Okay. Wait. 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 Let me oh. see. In order to compile your files in this editor. <sighs> there. Which one? Go to the book. Book. Okay. Here. You see where it says plug, maybe assign user ID? Plug, uh, maybe assign user ID. Oh, here. No, you just did that. Oh. 
Oh, this one? Yeah. Grab okay. that line. At this line. And add it to the pipeline browser. Um, um before end. No. Okay. You want to find the pipeline that is called browser and add it in there. Oh. This one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, save that. Hmm. Okay, so running mixed steps compiled didn't help your formatter. It's so weird. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway. Okay, so now you have, now you should have it assigned in your assigns. Um, hmm. uh, okay, continue with the next step. So now we're gonna add your user token to the connection. User okay. token to the connection. Okay. Okay, so this one? Yeah. Okay, add user token to connection. We now have a unique user underscore ID in the cookie session but we need to send it down to the front end encrypted as a user token. Let's add another function plug, plug in router.ex for creating an encrypted token from the user underscore ID. We will then pass this to the front, front end so it can be passed back to the server and verified in the user socket. Yeah, so all so, of this is secure. Mm -hmm. It's just to secure our um, user socket. Yeah, so you can copy that and then mm -hmm. paste it back in the router underneath mm -hmm. the other function. The round router. Um, yeah. Probably around here. Sure. Okay, and then also add it to your plugs. Oh. Mm -hmm. So add uh, user token to blocks. Yeah. So these functions will run on every page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're going to add the token to the front end. So continue with the book. So um, add user token to front end. Now we need to pass this token to JavaScript. We could add a, a snippet to drop of JavaScript to set the token on window object, but I am paranoid that the evaluation order of script tags make, makes this valuable uh, vulnerable to raise conditions. I will sidestep the parent nor yeah by just injecting the token into HTML at uh, root.html.hex layout. This is also what Phoenix itself does with the C uh, SARF, SARF uh, token. It's called a CSRF token. Oh, CSRF yeah. token. So root.html.hex root dot html dot hex um put it here uh, there's a token meta name user token be probably somewhere here this one yeah oh. Add user token to client side socket connection code. That user token document. This one. Then when we make the live socket in app.ts, let's grab it and pass it in the live socket constructor options. Again, this is following that Phoenix does the does with S uh, C S R F underscore token. Your live socket should look like this, uh, app.ts. Um, I'll grab it, pass the live socket. Okay. 
uh, import life socket. So yeah, I think you can just replace line ten. Line ten. Oh, so this one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let the user token document query this thing, and then verify user token in server size socket connect callback. Now we open up user underscore socket dot ex and replace the default connect function with this snippet that will verify the user token. So this one, open up user socket dot ex, user socket dot ex here. And then in, um, um, so, Get a, get a function there. Go to the bottom. I think mm -hmm. there's a connect a, a little higher. So just paste over this line 39 and 42. So delete this. Yeah, delete. Oh. Well, and also delete line 55. 55. Oh, 55. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, save it. And scroll down. Hmm. And then, yeah, you're going to want to copy and paste this into the room channel. .ex. Replace the join function. Oh, uh, verify room channel gets user ID. At this point, we have complete authenticating the socket and we have this additional user underscore id and the, in the socket we can use in room channel let's test that everything is hooked up properly by uh, broadcasting the room underscore id and user underscore id whenever any client joins open up room underscore channel dot ex room underscore channel.ex and modify join join this one uh, so copy and paste here dev and in copy and paste um can you scroll down i'll scroll down no 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 in the book sorry in the book mm -hmm. oh book you could do so because it calls an after join so you need to okay yeah grab and paste that hmm. into, yeah, grab that code there, hmm. which is the handle info, not that one. Oh, oh down here, handle, yeah. okay, here. Right. Um, um, the join function on a successful operation should return a true, uh, a, a, a tru tuple, tuple with something, okay, socket. Here we are adding the room underscore ID into the socket. So we have some memory to use in another handlers. User underscore ID is already in the sockets assigns thanks to the user socket connect callback, putting it in there. We did that. This send function is a build in function that will send a message to any Elixir process. Let me, in, let me just explain because you've, you've okay. done it and maybe yeah. the explanation isn't too clear. Hmm. Okay, so okay, okay. We, have, yeah. we have all this stuff in order to we put a unique user ID into the session, right? And then let me just clear this and clear it. So when we connect to the server, if this is our server, the first thing we do is connect to a live socket. And we are piggybacking on live socket. And this kind of piggybacking kind of breaks off into this code, which is implemented in user socket. And the user socket, we're passing it some kind of secret thing and in here we want to this the secret is encoded somehow and then we want to decode it to get back 
the user ID. So we encoded the user ID into a token. So it's a token. And we did that in the um, pipe, pipeline. So on every visitation to the page, let's say somebody visits here, the code goes to a router, PX, and it goes through that pipeline. In the pipeline, it maybe creates a user ID, um, uses it again if it exists. So that's why it was called like maybe, maybe put user ID or whatever. And then we also create a token. And so these are available in the assigns. So we put them both in the assigns, which is a, a thing that makes it available to the templates. And then every page has a root layout, root layout, lay layout, which has you know the HTML, the tags, whatever. And so you took this, you took this token, and then you put it inside here so that it's available to the page. And then later, when app.ts gets executed, which is somewhere down here, it looks on the page for that meta tag that you put. So you actually put the token here, right? So then it takes that token, and then it makes it available to the live socket. So here, <laughs> it's a little bit involved, but here you, you said, here's the, here's the token. Okay, so then the token comes through the user socket and then it gets decoded by that code that you pasted. And so now we have the user ID in this, uh, in this socket. It turns out that the socket is anything that's is, is also kind of like a session object. Anything in the socket is available to the room channel. So off of this, we also connect to, we join a room, right? We join a channel. And the, the topic that we're joining is the room ID. Anyway, when we join it, we're getting that user ID from, inside room channel. So we have this room channel and in the join, we're given the socket and we're just grabbing the user ID off of here. And so now what you're doing is that after you join, you can actually send, this is a, this is a process now. It's something executing almost like a server. So as soon as you join, this is like when the server first starts up and then it sends itself a message after it joins, after join, do something. So you're about to implement this handler. So when you send yourself messages, you need to implement handlers that handle the messages. Otherwise it will crash. So you're saying handle after join, and in here, you're going to send, you're going to broadcast a message. And you're going to shout, um, hey, this user ID joined. And when you broadcast, then it means that every connected person to this channel is going to get a message. So to test this, after you implement the handler, we're going to open your browser, two browser windows on your machine. This one will be an incognito. And you're going to open up the console log at the bottom of both of them. So when, when this one opens, you should see um, user like one, two, three join. And then when you open this one, then in this one, you're going to say user, user, let's say four, five, six join. But also this one will receive a two, user four, five, six. And so this is a demonstration that you've now hooked up communications between multiple browsers in order to identify when people are joining. And this person, uh, because they uh, joined first, they got their, their own message. Um, this person 
didn't see this message because you came later, right? But it saw its, its own message. So that's what we're going to test next. So coming back to you, if you could share your screen again, that's what that chapter in the book is saying. That handle event. So right there, handle info after join. So copy that code above it. Yeah, copy that. And go to the room channel and paste it after any handle in or you already have it open. This is room channel. So go up a little bit. Yeah, paste it on line, paste it after line 19, for example. Okay. So on line 23, it says it's going to broadcast shout and you're going to um, populate a map that's like user ID and then scroll a little bit to the right, user ID, scroll to the right, user ID and room ID. So you're going to say user ID joined. Okay, so save this. Okay, now is your, yeah, your server started. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and test this. So go ahead and go into your browser. <clears throat> yeah, why don't you, okay, is your server running? Let's see if there's any errors. Can you stop your server? Or close that tab. Yeah, so your server is not running. <clears throat> Start your server, please. There you go. And close one of your tabs because you've got two tabs open for localhost. So close one of them. Open up your console. Wait, I see an error. Go to the right. Okay, what does it say? User ID. Whoa, whoa, whoa. User ID not found in the da, da, for the room channel. Uh Web channels, room channel one six join. Okay, click into room channel and look at line six. It says there's no user ID found. Scroll up to line six in the file above. Socket assigns. Okay, so it should be there. Okay, so let's check out user socket. User socket should have that assigned in there. Look at user socket. Okay, scroll to the jump slower. Step okay, but then okay. Verify sockets and start talking about them. The assign into the socket user ID, otherwise it should error. Mm -hmm. User key not found. Okay, then let me see your, can I see your endpoint? Look up the file endpoint. We have this. This is user socket. Okay, that's fine. Can I see your app.ts? Ah, you didn't save it. 
Okay. Do we get attribute user token? Okay, so refresh. Refresh. Okay, no more red. Open up your console log in the browser. Not this. Go back to the other tab. Open up your console log. It should be command, I mean, option command I. Okay, go to your console tab. Okay, join success. Okay, uh, let's see. Refresh this again. I don't see the message. Oh, maybe because we're missing the shout part. Okay, let me see. Um, right. Let me see your um uh let me see your uh your broker system. Go to broker.ts. Hey, I don't have to type the whole thing out, can I really? Okay, so we need to we need to listen for it. So we can just add something here. Let me see if I, I can find it in the and I'll paste it to you. Channel. Here, I pasted it to you. Paste that at the um, after line twenty one. Okay, and save it. So this thing responds to the incoming message. So now you see it says, I received a shout. And look, you have a user ID and a room and, and the room ID. So user ID 30QFS. So that's you on the left hand side. So now open an incognito window and put us, place it side by side on the right hand side. So open up the console log and yeah, if you expand that object, so, so that's telling you your ID. Okay, that message still came from the left. So if you refresh the right side, so if you command R, refresh the right side. Notice how the left side received that too. So you're both in the same room, 5RWZH. But the browser on the right side is 82U2P. And if you refresh the left side, your browser on the right should get a new message too. So the browser on the right got 30Q. And so if you refresh the left like three times, you'll get three messages on your right. So he's getting message that. So anytime anybody comes into the room, you could open up another browser like Firefox or Safari, and it should still do this. So you can open up other browsers. And anytime you join the room, everybody who was in the room will receive a message of who joined the room. So I'm not sure if it will work with another incognito because two different incognitos, they share the same cookie. You know what I mean? So you probably have to open a different browser like Safari to get a different cookie because the way we implemented the unique ID is with the cookie session. And cookie sessions, they're different. I mean, they're the same for the same domain name and right now we're using a local development local host and so the only reason you got a different user is because you use incognito but the incognito i think is the same session for all incognito tabs so if you want to see like another person connected you 
you can like use Firefox if you have it or use a, a Safari browser, which I, you definitely have. You can just search for it, command, command space. Safari, there it is. So if you paste the room in, so if you look down, I don't know how to get up the console log in Safari, but if you look at your Chrome output, both of those should have had like another user. So you see how there's a new unique user? OKYRW, okay, that's like a new person. So it works on any browser. Is your audio still connected? I don't hear you talking. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there are three users right now. There are three users, right. Right. So we've made sort of the networking part, the communication between the mm. three. So we're almost at time. It was maybe pretty complicated and we explained it pretty fast and it sort of depended on some prior knowledge of hmm. Phoenix channels. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was very difficult to understand what you were doing, hmm. but pretty much once it's set up, you don't really need to know how it works. You just need to know if you, if you need to send a new message, hmm. uh, we're gonna go through how to, how to create a new message and then all you want to do is be able to respond to your new message and just know mm. that it's connected everywhere. So that's really all you need to know. Mm. It, it's going to work. So in the future, mm. we need to be able to craft messages. For mm. example, how should I say, like, I'm moving from here to there? We're going to send mm. a location. How should we say that a person left, right? We haven't done that yet. Mm. So right now, if you close the browser, you're not going to get a message. So in the next couple of chapters, we're gonna we're gonna figure that stuff out. We we want a message anytime somebody joins. We want a message anytime somebody leaves, mm -hmm. so we can remove their mesh, remove their avatar from the scene. We mm -hmm. want to receive a message anytime somebody moves, mm -hmm. and we also want a way of like tagging other objects with other pieces of data. For example, um, maybe there is something you want to pick up. You don't want to be able to pick up every object in the scene, right? So mm -hmm. maybe we'll mark certain objects as as holdable, things that we can grab, mm -hmm. um, and things that are um, that can control how they look. For example, their color. We can add those kind of components to things. So we'll be setting up that that kind of stuff up in future chapters. Mm -hmm. But now you have a milestone. We have a a scene to look at. And we have mm. some communications. Now we're going to mm. tie the communications up with the scene. Mm. So that would be very exciting, right? We're going to be able to send messages and use Babylon JS to say, okay, I got this message. What do you want me to do with the scene? I can change the color. I can move something up and down. I can make it bigger or smaller. So um, we're almost there to where it's <laughs> going to be going to be fun. It's been a it's been a long journey. You've been doing a lot of like back end server stuff just to get to this point. But congratulations. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for Holman's like a demonstration. And uh, finally, we are from super complicated. Um, I can tell you for people who who were follow uh, this uh, session, uh, probably at the beginning, you probably don't really know what's going on. And just like me, pretty much copy and paste and sometimes copy and paste the wrong place. Uh, but it's fine. Finally, we get to the Point that something is a little bit simple like a ball in a room like very simple to to look at and hopefully we will slowly dive into Babylon JS and Babylon JS I know that Babylon JS kind of promote uh, this session as well so hopefully people who are looking for uh, uh, more Babylon JS they can kind of learn more next session yeah Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I will see everybody next week. Bye-bye.